Okay, today we're going to take a look at um, how we're going to go about sketching um, our secant and our cosecant graphs. All right, we're going to use a guide function approach, um, which basically just means that we're going to, for a secant graph, we are going to sketch a cosine graph. All right, kind of put it on our sketch with a dotted line and then use that as our guide for where we place our secant function. All right, and then same thing with cosecant. All right, our guide function for a cosecant function is going to be sine. So we'll put our sine um, graph on and then we will use that as a guide to then show us where to put our cosecant on at. Um, everything is going to remain the same. Um, we'll still calculate our period using the formula 2 pi over b. We'll still calculate our um, amplitude with the absolute value of a. All right, and as a refresher, just where those coefficients are, a sits in front of the trig function, and your b coefficient is in front of your x right there. All right, um, so for our um, first example, um, we're going to take a look at y equals 2 cosecant of x over 4. All right, now our guide function for this one is going to be sine. All right, so I'm going to write that. I'll write it in red. So we're going to use y equals 2 sine, and then I'm even going to pull out that coefficient there so we can see it real easy, 1 fourth x. All right, so this is going to be our guide function and what we're going to be using to help us sketch that cosecant function. All right, now some things that you probably are going to need to calculate um, in order to do this sine thing. Our amplitude would be the absolute value of whatever a is right there. Okay, so absolute value of 2 is going to be 2. All right, and then if I calculated my period, I'd use the formula 2 pi over b. b, the b coefficient there is a 1 fourth. So 2 pi over 1 fourth. All right, simplify that. You can multiply through by 4, all right, and you're going to get an 8 pi then for our period. All right, so we're going to use those two numbers when we sketch that sine wave for our guide function. All right, so I'm going to go kind of long here. Okay, now if we know that our period is 8 pi, all right, so basically I need four hash marks for my sign, preferably four relatively equally spaced. So that would be 8 pi right there, 4 pi would be right there. Okay, and let's go ahead and do four this way, about the same amount. All right, so that'd be a negative 4 pi, that'd be a negative 8 pi right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is... Um, in red and in dotted, I'm going to go ahead and put my sine wave on. All right, if we recall, sine starts at zero, all right, and then goes up, and we'll say our amplitude there is two and negative two. All right, so sine wave then goes up, starts to come back down, a little wave pattern there, continuing on. So just putting those dots on there so I know where that sine wave is going to go. Okay, now I'm going to put it in a dotted line because that's not part of the cosecant graph. I'm just putting this on there so that I've got something to look at as a guide when I do that cosecant function. Okay, so then there's my sine wave. Okay, now what I'm going to do is every place that the sine wave crosses the x-axis, every one of those x-intercepts, I am going to add a vertical asymptote. Okay, so I'm going to put vertical asymptotes at negative 8 pi and at negative 4 pi. And then there's going to be one there on the y-axis. That one's going to be really, really hard to see. Okay, so I just kind of maybe do a little dotted line there on the axis. All right, and another one at 4 pi. and then another one at 8 pi. Okay, now you're going to use that as a guide, okay? Your cosecant function will be at each one of these maxes and mins on the sine wave, 
Okay, so this one is up here. It's going to, that'll be a min right there. It's going to hug those two asymptotes. All right, so we're just going to kind of put it in right there. I come down here to this spot. Now it'll be a max. I'm going to hug the two asymptotes, making that a max in that X section right there. All right, come over here to this peak. Hug my asymptotes and have them in. All right, and then coming down here, the last section, making that a max right there and hugging those two asymptotes. All right, now it is just a rough sketch, all right, of my cosecant graph there, all right, and making sure that the only parts of the cosecant graph are the solid lines right there and the vertical asymptotes. The red line, which is the sine wave, all right, is just used to guide so that I know exactly where those um, cosecant uh, parts of the graph should be placed. Okay, so there's a, an example of cosecant. All right, now let's go ahead and do a secant graph as an example. All right, on this one, I'm going to um, use the cosine as my guide function. All right, so I would have y equals 3 cosine pi over 2x. Okay, so then this would be my guide function. All right, and then from there, I should probably calculate my amplitude. Amplitude would be absolute value of my A there, so it would be 3. And then my period is going to be calculated by that 2 pi over B. All right, and then this time, my B is pi over 2. So 2 pi over pi over 2. All right, I want to simplify that complex fraction, multiply through by 2. All right, that's going to give me um, a 4. And this cross out, pi's across that, is going to give me just a 4 for my period. Okay, so there's amplitude and period. Okay, so I'm going to, again, make a pretty long x-axis. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cosine graph on. All right, I know I have a period of 4, and I know the amplitude is 3. Okay, so I'm going to do 4 hash marks to the right. Somewhat relatively equally spaced there. I'm then going to then do 4 to the left. Okay, so negative 2, negative 4. All right, now um, I'm going to go ahead and put the cosine graph on in red. And then I know I have an amplitude of 3. Okay, so let's say 3 is about right there. And we'll say negative 3 is right about there. Okay, now recalling that cosine starts up. All right, so then my first point on the cosine graph would be there. And then it starts to go down and around, making that cosine wave. Continuing on that pattern to the left. Okay, now I'm going to do it in the dotted line because it is just the guide function. It's not part of the sketch of the secant graph. Okay, now I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing I did with the other one. All right, every place that that cosine graph crosses the x-axis, all right, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a vertical asymptote. So right there at 3, I will have a vertical asymptote. All right, I will also have one at 1. And then I'll have another one at negative 1. And another one at negative 3. Okay, and then again, you will use the cosine graph here as your guide function. Every place that there is a max or a min, then you will draw your secant graph. Okay, now over here, since I don't have another asymptote over here, you can do a half of one over here if you want. This would be a min. Okay, so that might just show half right there. All right, now this section right here will have a max right there at that point, and I'll hug the two asymptotes. Okay, this one right here will have a min, and we'll hug the two asymptotes. This one will have a max. It'll hug my two asymptotes. And then again here, I don't have another asymptote over here, but I could do half. I wanted to do half right there. I could do half. Okay. Now, it is just a rough sketch, all right, but that is using the cosine graph as your guide function. So the red dotted line is not part of the secant graph 
which I see can graph is just the black lines that you see along with the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so um, just one method on doing a rough sketch for your secant and cosecant graphs. Um, if you liked the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.